In 1995, you dramatically changed the view we had about planet formation in the universe with the discovery of the first giant planet outside our solar system. And this discovery started a revolution in astronomy. And this year, you shared the Nobel Prize in physics with Michel Maillot for the discovery of an exoplanet orbiting a solar type star. Can you summarize the key findings in your paper published in Nature in 1995? We identify the first planet orbiting another star than the sun. That was a key discovery and that was a trigger for the field because up to that day, people were hoping that there are planets somewhere on other stars, but no one had really found one. What came with this discovery, it's a lot of embarrassment as well because the planet was not at all the way we expected the planet to be. Um, we found a big planet because there was the only one we could detect the biggest, the more massive, or the easiest one to find. But the problem of that planet was the orbit of the planet. The planet was orbiting extremely close to the star, 20 times closer than the orbit of the Earth. That was really awkward, and we call this planet by now the hot Jupiter. So we detected the first planet, but also we found a planet that the whole theory of the planetary formations was not predicting. So at the same time, we broke the theory. So that was really the, the, um, the main impact of this discovery um, almost 25 years ago. According to our former understanding of the formation of solar systems, 51 Peg B shouldn't be where it is now. And if we follow the past 30 years of discoveries, that tells us that our solar system is a very unusual system. Where are we now in terms of planetary system models? And if you can compare between models back in 1995 and now? This is a very interesting question because um, the first discovery was awkward, but, but all the other discovery that came later on um, was also awkward as well because we kept detecting planets that no one had predicted practically. We have plenty of hot Jupiter, but we have also objects we had no idea they would exist, like a hot Earth or super Earth or hot mini Neptunes. We have this, this kind of population of, of planet being detected that we cannot directly compare to the one we have in the solar system. So then you have a, a very detailed theory that is working pretty well to explain the formations and the nature of our own system. We have a lot of data we can collect on each of the planet. We have also all the remnant body you find in the solar system. Sometimes we have pieces of the old solar system falling on Earth, we can study this. So there's a lot, a lot of elements we can, we can put together. Um, we have the detailed atmospheric compositions of, of at least a giant planet in the solar systems. We have a good understanding of the telluric planet, maybe not Mercury, which is not very well known, but, but we have this cool picture and, um, and this picture makes sense. So, so I think that all the discovery of exoplanet, they don't challenge this picture for the solar system, but they're just telling us that this picture is one amongst the many possibilities we have to form planet. So now we have expanded this picture and we have added a lot of new ingredients. One of them is the fact that the planet can, in a way, move in the early stage a lot more than without. You can form a planet at some locations and then you can move the planet in. So when we do that, we call that migrations, but you can also have a multi-planetary system which is interacting. And then due to the interaction of each of the planet, you, you move along the planet. So you can move them out and move them in, and then it becomes a bit more difficult to get a clear understanding how you connect the, um, the initial stage to the end product, because so many things can happen, uh, then you can completely blur uh, the initial situations. So, so that's a bit uh, the game that we're trying to play right now, is trying to see how far we can go back in time um, with looking not at a few planets, but quite a lot in a kind of a global way and trying to retrieve as much data we can. So there is the obvious data like mass and size we can get, but, but actually now we're getting some, some elements um, from the atmosphere of the planet. And, and in a way, this is, this is telling us part of the story uh, where the um, the element making the planet 
may have been accreted by the planet or build up of the planet. So it means we, it's not enough to detect them and to get the mass and the size. We really want to know what is about the atmosphere of this planet, like we have been doing in the solar system when we started to study the atmosphere of the giant planet. And this is telling us that the, um, the giant planet, or the one that looks um, big enough to have a lot of gas, may have formed in the outskirts of the solar system, um, just to the fact that these are where the ingredients were uh, an inner kind of solid form that you can easily accrete on the top of the planet. And that's known as the, the formation mechanism of a giant planet beyond the ice line, whatever ice, if, whether it's water or if it's another, uh, it's another gas that becomes solid. So the theory is moving in those directions and trying to connect the, the detailed data we have on the solar system with the kind of loose data, but we have on plenty of other planet. We have not reached a complete agreement right now for the reason is we don't have enough planet that looks like the solar system and namely planet like the Earth or Venus, like, so like Venus. So now we're back to the solar system and we're asking to ourselves, okay, so why then the solar system didn't move? And, uh, and this is part of the key ongoing question we're trying to solve. And it's the reason why there is a space mission called TESS right now flying um, that is trying to identify more of transiting systems to study. Um, this is why we are about to fly Keops. Uh, it's an ESA mission it's going to go in more detailed analysis of this transit. And, and this is why there will be James Webb Space Telescope soon launched that will study the atmosphere of this planet. And this is why we have Ariel, for example, in the ESA uh, landscape that will be studying the detail of the atmosphere. So there's really a kind of a plan right now which is moving us toward expanding the knowledge we had on the solar system uh, into the many planets. So in these models, what sort of equations are you using right. on these? Okay, so there is a couple of elements into the, the formation stage of a planet. We don't understand all the detail of it, but we have a good global picture of it. So the first element, which most of the people would agree, is the planet is formed by an accretion mechanism. In astrophysics, usually you don't really have this mechanism. Usually you have something which is called a collapse when you have a big stuff, like a big cloud of gas, and the cloud just collapses by the self-gravity. And that's, that's what it is used to, um, this, to form stars. The planet, they're not being formed like that. Um, uh, the planet are being formed from, from, from the inside out, so you really start to glue together small pieces and then they collide and they glue further and then when they become massive enough, they start to accrete a lot of material and when they are really massive, they accrete everything around and typically the, the gas. So this is what happens for when you form a giant planet, uh, is you build up a core and then this core becomes a planetesimal and this planetesimal start to accrete gas and then it becomes a planet. Now, to accrete the material, it means you are within something that feed you so this something, we call that a protoplanetary disk. We see them with plenty of examples right now. And, uh, and the problem with the disk is um, the disk has also a set gravity. So you have interaction between the two. Uh, practically, the planet is steering uh, gravity waves into the disk. And the disk has a response time, a bit of a lag. And it means that the disk itself will induce a gravitational effect on the planet. They're not exactly balanced, there's a bit of a delay, and if there's a delay, it means you produce a kind of tidal force, you produce a torque, and with the torque, you affect the angular momentum of the planet. So this is moving the planet in all directions, depending on the material you have around. Uh, if you have also other planet around, then it's just the gravitation effect. The planets see each other, especially if they are what's called in resonance, if they always have a kind of a multiple of the period, then, then all the effect will be enhanced. The interaction with the disk was not well understood early on. Some people predicted this for the solar system, for the formations of the satellite of, um, of the giant planet, but it was never thought to be an element for the formation of the planet. So right now, people are really considering this very seriously into the, into the, into the modeling. So these are really the, the basic equation. No, if you really want to go to the detail of how do you accrete the material together, I think there is, is a long list of, of theory, but there is no well-defined theory that explains this, as well as 
if you migrate the planet, you have to stop the planet. So how do you stop it? When you start migrating, it will never stop. If you keep pushing, if you keep removing the angular momentum, he will end up into the star. So you have to find a way to hold this. And uh, again, there's a list of poss uh, possible effects that explain, well, first that the torque decrease, then you can also have a tidal effect between the stars and the planet when you come very close. You also have the magnetic field. So there's a lot of element that comes together and, and nobody has a clear picture of that because it's very difficult to get the data at that stage of the formation process of a system. But we're working on that. There's bigger telescope being built. They seeing sharper, deeper. They can see more detail. And we have this great uh, facility, which is called ALMA, which is a millimetric radio telescope that we can just combine together. So that's a real challenge. I mean, this formation of the planetary, I mean, um, it's a challenge right now for the community, but that's one of the key focus of most of the program that, uh, that directs the effort right now of the community.